Hello, this is an introduction to Blackboard Collaborate, formerly known as Illuminate. For this class, Blackboard Collaborate is our online classroom. You'll get to this page by clicking on the link provided by your instructor. Once you get into the online classroom, your online classroom will look something like this, with an initial slide and then all of your toolbars over here on the left. This tutorial is going to just give you an idea of what's available to you and how to participate in class. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you purchase a, a set of headphones. If you're using a public computer lab, the only way you're going to be able to hear the instructor during lecture is by having headphones plugged into the computer. The next thing you're going to want to do is to test your audio to make sure your headphones and your microphone, if you have one, are working properly. So, how do you test the audio? Go up to Tools, select Audio, and then click on Audio Setup Wizard. Audio Setup Wizard will go ahead and select the speaker or headphone that you have plugged into the computer. Or you can select if there's more options. Go ahead and click OK. And then you'll be able to test your speakers. When you hit Play, you'll hear a sound clip and then you'll be able to see whether your speakers are working. Welcome to the Audio Setup Wizard. This wizard will help you set the optimum levels for both your microphone and speakers. Please follow the instructions carefully. At this time, move the speaker slider to the right to increase the volume, or to the left to decrease the volume. To increase your volume further, you may have to adjust the level on your speakers. To repeat this message, click No and then try again. Thank you. All right, so if you were able to hear that just fine and you've adjusted the volume to the appropriate level, go ahead and click Yes. Now, if you have a microphone plugged into your computer, you'll be able to test the microphone output. To do that, go ahead and select the device and click OK. Here, you'll actually make a recording and then see whether your recording works or not. This is a test of the microphone. Click stop when you are done testing. Now you're able to play back what you have, what you have just recorded to see whether your microphone is working. This is a test of the microphone. Click stop when you are done testing. So if that sounded good to you and you think you might use your microphone during class, go ahead and click yes. Now you are set up to use your audio for this class. So go ahead and click OK. You'll want to make sure you do this audio setup wizard every time you log in to Blackboard Collaborate. So remember, it's Tools, Audio, Audio Setup Wizard. Another quick shortcut to, to access the audio setup wizard is by clicking on this little microphone icon with the red star. That's an easy way to jump directly to the audio setup wizard. So again, make sure you do that before each class period. The next thing you might want to do is create a profile. This allows you to have a picture visible to the main classroom. You can do this by going to Edit, Preferences, scroll down till you see Profile, click on My Profile, and here is where you can actually input an image for your profile. So you can change the image or download an image from your computer. Also, you can put in your first and last name, your title, and then your company, what university you're at. You can add information like your cell phone or your email address, but for these classes, don't put in your addresses or too much information, just the basics that you might want to share with some of your classmates, like your email address. When you're finished, click OK or Apply and then you'll have your image displayed on the participants window. So for our setup here in Blackboard Collaborate, there's three main windows. The, par the participants window at the top, the, the audio and video window, and then the chat window. Now for your particular setup, it might be in a different order. That's because you can actually move these windows around to essentially make your desktop look how you want it to look. To move these windows, go ahead and click on this little horizontal line icon, and you can detach the panel. 
This allows you to either see all of the participants, so if you have a very large class, you might want to open this up so you can see all participants. And if you want to put this back over where it was, you can essentially just say attach panel. And that essentially allows you to rearrange these panels how you wish. Now, for most class periods, when you join into the classroom, you'll see the first slide of the lecture slides, something like this. Often, I will instead open up a blank slide for you to see, which is where you can which is where you can draw on the whiteboard. So this big area where the lecture slide just was is called the whiteboard. Available to you will be these tools. The pen icon allows you to draw, so if you click on it, you'll be able to change the color. Right now yellow is selected, let's choose red. You can change how bright it is. I'll make it just about, let's say, 40%. You can change the stroke really big. Okay, so now you can draw. Say hello to your fellow classmates. Just make sure you're appropriate for classroom. You can also type text. You can draw squares. All kinds of fun stuff. Just to, you know, have a little bit of fun while you're waiting for class to start. Sometimes a blank screen will be open when you first come to class. This blank screen is the whiteboard. It's the whiteboard where your lecture notes are also going to appear. So on the whiteboard, you have the opportunity to essentially just play around with the different options and illuminate. This pen feature is literally a pen that you can draw with on the whiteboard. You can change the color. We can make it blue. Just some different options for you to have a little fun while you're waiting for class to start. You can experiment with adding in text. You can add shapes. And different options like that. Sometimes this will become very useful if you're doing any kind of group project during class or you're giving a presentation to the class. In general though, when we start class, these tools will be available to you before the actual period starts, but once lecture is going to begin, these tools will become unavailable to you, and the first screen you'll see will be the first slide of the lecture. All right, so let's say you've now joined class and you want to participate in class. One of the easiest ways to participate is by just using text chatting. Your chat box is where you can participate in text chatting. So right now you can already see my student name, I'm John Smith, and I've communicated with the instructor. So I might say, I, I'm sorry, I was late for class. Even though you're never really late for class, hopefully. And the instructor might respond to you, or our other students in the class might respond to you as well. Another way you can communicate in the class is by actually talking on your microphone if you have that. If that option is available to you, you can simply click on the talk button and you'll be able to be heard by the entire class. But sometimes the instructor might not let that be available to you. So the main way to communicate, ask questions, is by using the chat window. Now, how do you let the teacher know you have a question? The other most important tools you're going to use in this class are these little icons right underneath the participant window. So where you see your name, these four little icons are going to be crucial for your participation during class. The first icon are these little emoticons, smiley faces, laughing out loud. When you click on one of these, it shows the entire class what you're feeling, let's say. You either got a smiley face, or you want to tell the teacher to slow down, they're maybe talking too fast, or, oh, I really liked that, that was great. You can give an applause. So the entire class can see these emoticons. The next important tool up here is this little face with the clock next to it. This is if you're going to need to step away for class for any reason, whether you need to go to the bathroom or go get a drink of water. Make sure you click this away symbol so the instructor knows you're not currently at your computer. But make sure as soon as you come back to your computer, you click back into the classroom. Because if you don't, the teacher will think you are away and you will not be able to earn participation points. 
Now, let's say you want to ask a question, but you need to get the instructor's attention. The easiest way to do that is to raise your hand using this hand icon. When you do this, it's going to make a little ding sound on the instructor's end so they can see that you have a question. So raise your hand and then ask your question. And then the instructor will get to, get to answering your question as soon as they have a chance. All right, some other important features are the polling questions. Now, different questions can be asked during the lecture slides. In general, for this class, I'll put up a slide that says concept question on it. They'll have several questions. So for this example, there's going to be four different responses that are needed. So to respond to this question, you'll use the polling features. This is the polling feature. Right now, it's set as a yes, no, or none answer. We need one that says A, B, C, D. So the instructor will change this depending on the type of concept question that becomes available. So there we go. The instructor has changed it so now we can answer A, B, C, or D. So when you want to answer a concept question, do not answer down in the chat box, but instead use this polling feature up in the participant window. So let's see, which of the following major branches of science does astronomy use? Physics? Chemistry? Oh, I think it's physics. So my answer is A. Oh, maybe I changed my mind. Never mind. I can change my answer to be above all the above. Now my answer is D. And you'll be able to see the responses of, of all the students in the class. Those are the major ways that you're going to participate in class. Otherwise, anything else that goes on in class, your instructor will let you know how to use that once you're already in the classroom. Now, when you leave the classroom, when class is over, make sure you fully log out of Illuminate. I also want to make a quick note that Illuminate will crash if you are on a wireless connection. It's best to be on a direct line, but if that's not possible, just understand that you might have to exit Illuminate and then come back in to Illuminate to continue class. All right, so that is your brief introduction to using Blackboard Collaborate, also called Illuminate. I hope that was helpful and good luck in your class using Blackboard Collaborate.